my gosh. Hi, Aminder. Hello. How's it going? It's good. These poor people have no idea what they're in for, do they? <laughs> um, No, but I mean, I guess that that's up to them if they just want to keep listening, you know? I know. Like, right off the bat, the first thing you're hearing from us is, we're not even sure why you're here, but welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to tell y'all what what we're doing, why we're doing it. A little bit about who we are, but briefly, because after hearing this little intro, you guys are going to roll into the very first thing Amanda and I ever did together, which happened to be on my show, Tell Me Your Truth. And we sort of came up with this concept a while ago that her and I would come together and we talk about all the quirky things that it that it's like to be neurodivergent and like what our experience is and just kind of add that to my show. Well, it very quickly turned into its own entity. It grew its own legs, so to speak. And I felt like it just needed to live on its own show. Hence, here we are. So you're going to find out very soon why I call her a minder. So we're just going to we're going to skip right the fuck on over that to start with. You guys find out real soon. But hi, Amanda, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, I didn't even say who I was. Hold on. Hi, I'm Nikki and I am one of your hosts. And this is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Tell the people. Hi. hello. Hi. Yes, uh, I'm Amanda. I'm I'm a host, but also I I just also feel like I'm along for the ride, like on on this little adventure um of life and Nikki show. So, but <laughs> yes, hi, yep. But it's our show. It's mm-hmm. not just my show anymore because she started like I said as like coming on my show and it was like a segment, right? And this was just like a little thing, and we would do it whenever we felt like doing it. And then like very quickly we decided we really liked this. And I'm like, I think it should just be its own thing. And we're having a lot of fun doing this. And we had several episodes recorded um, already from my show. And so those are going to make an appearance here as well. Um, The the first few episodes will be the ones that we have pre-recorded. And then we have many more shenanigans in store for you that Mm -hmm. we have in the can (laughs) ready to go. We're so excited for you to hear all of this nonsensical BS. And some... Uh, helpful tips and tricks sometimes and some half-assed things that make sense because we are both neurodivergent brains right that's why it's called this so um you're also going to find out after this what kind of neurodivergent we are we're gonna we're gonna touch on that and explain all of that to you but we wanted to very quickly just come on here and say welcome to the shit show <laughs> that there's is- gonna be a whole there's gonna be a whole lot of awkward just, a just whole lot of put that out there. Oh, a whole lot. Um, I stumble over my words and say things that make absolutely no sense. And Amanda has to sometimes flip through the Rolodex that is her brain for a response when she's complimented. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also sometimes just not very good at improv because <laughs> yes, <laughs> I just I just can't compute sometimes. Yes, brain no compute. And then there are those rare nights. Well, they're, I guess they're really not so rare, but most nights our brains are leaking from our fucking ears. And I feel like those are the fun episodes because we really say stupid things and can laugh quite a lot. But the main goal, right? All of this babble to tell you the main goal of this show is to talk about our experience as neurodivergent people and bring up topics each week about different neuro different things about being neurodivergent so we'll cover um different things you can be diagnosed with different experiences that neurodivergent people have um how our lens is different from the rest of the world even on things that people normal people neurotypicals would experience every single day the way we experience them is different so we're here to just give you our take on life and and laugh a lot and there's um, usually Mad Libs in an AI story, which is also very fun because we grew <laughs> up in the era of Mad Libs. And um, I'm going to say this again, even though it was mentioned on my previous show, if none of you have heard that one. Um, I totally stole the Mad Libs idea from my favorite podcast probably ever, uh, The Witch Bitch Amateur Hour. If you guys do not know what that is, go go listen. Even if you're not into witchy shit, they're fucking hilarious. But they did Mad Libs one time on their show and it reminded me 
of the time that you and me and our, and our friend Scott and our little friend group would sit in Scott's parents' little den and do Mad Libs and play apples to apples like a bunch of little stupid teenagers and make them as ignorant and inappropriate as possible. <laughs> so, because you're going to learn very quickly that we are highly nostalgic human beings. And so we will do anything and everything we can to, to infuse our lives with as much nostalgia as and possible. Gives us just a little bit of dopamine. Just a okay. little bit of dopamine. We, we dopamine <laughs> so fucking hard. For some nostalgia, okay? Like, we will dopamine the last fucking neurochemical out of some nostalgia we possibly can before we move on from it. So if we ever quit doing Mad Libs, you know, we have exhausted the dopamine left in them and it's on to something else. Rest assured, we will find something else to bring the dopamine and the fun back to the show. Mm -hmm. Amir, do you have anything to add before we let the people hear this brilliant episode that kicked off our little, you know, our little thing we got going on here that's now a whole ass podcast all by itself with its own little legs, its own little feet, its own life <laughs> being launched into the world. Do you have something to say to the people before they listen to the fucking shenanigans that are about to happen on the other side of this? Um, well, like I said, like she said, it's just going to be, it turned into its own thing. It's now an entity that was uh, born onto the awkward universe <laughs> the awkward verse if you will um so also i just want to point out that we are also can see each other because we're on zoom and i just see her as she's talking looking around the room con constantly like i just see her staring up into the corner of the ceiling and i i don't know if she's noticed me doing this just playing with like something on my computer <laughs> <laughs> like I was trying to get something off my computer and like with my tongue sticking out and everything. So if we just sound distracted, uh, we are. Yeah, so, we are uh, always. Uh, and I can't talk with my, I talk with my hands, even if you can't see me. So mm -hmm. maybe one day, maybe one day you guys will get to see us. If this gets really cool and really big and lots of people like it, maybe, maybe I'll convince Amanda to buy a webcam so we can do a YouTube <laughs> channel. Go ahead. Interrupted. Uh, Go ahead. Say, at least the webcam that's not on the worst part of the computer it can be, uh, where I have to balance this thing on my knees so <laughs> you don't look up at the worst angle possible for a camera. But yes, yes, that that <laughs> possibly one day she has, she has convinced me to do this. So anything's possible, you know. Anything's yeah, because possible. I begged this woman, which you will also hear. I've begged her, be like, please, but please, please. Come on the show. And then finally I convinced her and I somehow conned her into making this a weekly episodic excursion where the <laughs> two of us do this and y'all get to listen to us be cray cray. Okay, Amender, final thoughts. And then we're going to let the people get into it. The very first ever episode of I the new on its own show. Anything else to say to the folks? Um, No, I think we pretty much covered it. Uh, I think, Edward, you know, you're just going to have a lot of fun. I mean... There'll be cringy moments, but there'll be fun moments and loving moments. But I think you'll have a lot of fun and at least laughing at us, if not with us. So for sure at us. that going for you. So we're sure at us because mm -hmm. we are not fucking professionals. Um, and you can also refer to our disclaimer in the show notes of every episode. We are also not fucking doctors, nor do we play one on television. So we are n anything, anything we discuss on this show, anything at all. Don't fucking listen to us, okay? Just don't. Mm -hmm. We don't know our asses from a hole in the ground, as my grandfather would say. So please do not take anything said here as proper medical advice. Please seek out all of the normal health professionals that went to school and got a degree to be able to tell you what to do with your, your mind and body before you ever listen to us. These are all just opinions and experiences. What is that little disclaimer they put in front of TV shows? The views and, and opinions expressed here are not, the views and, <laughs> are not the views and opinions of this yeah. network as a whole. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically that, right? Just don't fucking listen to us. We have no idea what the fuck we're talking about. We're just having a lot of fun. And this is just our experience. But we're going to shut up now. And we're going to let you listen to the very first ever episode Amanda and I ever recorded together. Here it is. We'll catch you on the other side. See ya. My friends, this week we have a very special guest with us. This is Aminder, and she sucks and just no get. Yes, I, I definitely do not get, and I, I always suck. Oh my gosh. So 
This is my bestest friend ever, Amanda. And you've heard me talk about her before on the show. And we are going to be graced with her presence today because I have begged this woman and pestered this woman for God knows how long <laughs> to do this with me. And she say, ah, oh, fuck a no up until now. So um, I have somehow conned her into doing this. Um, and so I'm very happy she's here. Um, we are going to play a little game for you later on. But first, I would like to sort of give y'all a glimpse into our friendship, kind of how long we've been friends, why we think we've stayed friends this long over so many years, and (laughs) some of our little inside jokes that nobody understands that, like the one I introduced her with, um, we are going to give a little bit of context to some of those things because we say things a lot um, that are inside jokes that literally nobody understands but us. And it's just, it's fun. So we're going to, we're going to let you in a little bit on our little inner sanctum of a world here. So (laughs) like I said, this is Amanda. Um, I want you to start with explaining your introduction. What does Aminder, why, you know, the Amanda part. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Well, it's, it started, I think what class it was. It was some class I took while at college. It was some art class and the teacher was, I think she was Korean, um, originally from Korea. English was obviously not her first language. And she had a very blunt attitude, a very, um, not very nice way of speaking. And I just remember <laughs> one time our class was not understanding what she was saying. Outright, I'll suck. Why you, why you suck? Why you no get? Why you no get? And she always called me Amender because she couldn't say Amanda. I don't know why she added an ER at the end. Um, but that's just how it went. And so now I just constantly say, Aminder, like, why you no get, why you suck. So just based on that random Korean lady who I can't remember her name. So that's, that's where that comes from. Some, And this, my friends, is pretty much our friendship. Like, we will take the most random stupid shit and turn it into an inside joke. Like this, this poor woman. Like, who, you have to move. Like, you have to move. Get out of the way. Move. Oh my God. Yeah. So that's the one from high school. So in high school, I had the most ridiculous fucking curfew ever. And on nights when we would do like football games, football games wouldn't be over till like what, like nine 30, sometimes 10 o'clock or something like that. And you were in mm-hmm. the band and yeah. I didn't play an instrument, but I hung out with the band kids and you had your license way before I did. And so she would take me, like, we would hurry up and like get ready and leave the ball field, the football field. And we drive to steak and shake because all the band kids and everyone hang out at steak and shake after the football games. And I would only have enough time to go there, order fries with cheese, get them to the table. And then you have to turn around and take me home. And we'd have to go from one side of Marion all the way to the other (laughs) back to my house. And this, this poor gentleman Mm -hmm. one night. We were cutting it so close. This poor man on his little bicycle was within minutes, within minutes was like coming across. Like we were making a turn and he was like leaving the little gas station on the corner and crossing the street in front of us. And we see him and we're not very far away from him. And I'm screaming, just move. Move. I swear to God, if you don't, we're going to run you over. I will pay for your medical bills, but I'm going to hit you if you don't move. <laughs> and that was just, you have to move. You have to move. <laughs> it was um, a night that I was inches away from being grounded for the rest of my life if I didn't make it home on time because one minute late, mm-hmm. equaled, I was done living a life after that. And so, we yeah, I think you at- basically had to be home by like what 10 30, 11, yeah. and we didn't get to like mainly we went to steak and shake every time. And mm-hmm. these four steak and shake people that work there <laughs> having to, you know, accommodate just hordes of band students. And and like we basically made it there by 10, 10 30, and you had to be home at like 10 30, 11 o'clock. Like without fail. And this is like Friday. This was like no school night. This was Friday. And that poor bicycle, I hope he's doing okay. Maybe he got a car by now. Let's hope. Um, So that way he's not in danger of being hit by random teenagers that are impatient, but also in danger of being grounded. So here's hoping. 
I know, bless his heart. He was, he was, he had no idea how close he came to death that night because we just did not care. <laughs> and we, this is what we do. We just, we hang on to stupid inside jokes from 16 years ago. And this is just our life. And mm-hmm. I love every minute of it. And we, <laughs> our favorite things I think to do together have got to be YouTube videos. And since we have been around since yes. the inception of YouTube, we are that old. We have been mm-hmm. around since YouTube mm-hmm. was a creation and was new to the scene. Um, we have a bazillion and a half inside jokes from YouTube. Um, what is the name? Is it Key of Awesome? Mm-hmm. That we quote awesome. all the time. Key and then uh, the shoes. 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 Yes. Shoes. That one. <laughs> we, we are from the era of shoes. And and if you don't know what shoes is, God help you. You're very young and and have a lot of life yeah. left to live and have not He's been too young for you, son. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we will. We're going to link some of our favorites in the show notes. That's what we're going to do. So I will find them and I will link them. But <laughs> these videos, the, and, the masses must be educated. Okay, this they is, must be. You know, we must educate the children. Internet history. Yes, mm-hmm. internet. This is YouTube history 101 right here. Um, and then mm-hmm. what were they called? The videos with him adding lyrics to the intro to the cartoons. Oh, yes. Um, oh, God. It was Nostalgia Critic. Um, yes. And like, like basically intros to like different TV shows that didn't have lyrics. So he added lyrics to the music like Doogie Hauser. Songs that don't Doogie have lyrics, Doogie but Hauser. I added them anyway. <laughs> That's what it was. Yes, that one. Mm-hmm. Yep, that one. <laughs> I've recently found those again, and I was so happy. I watched all the ones. <laughs> oh my god. You must send so that I can link those as well, because our favorite one has to be the Doogie Hauser MD one and the Batman animated yes. series one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Batman, the animated yeah, series. series. It's eerie <laughs> mystery. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? Oh my God. They just blew up. Just blew up thing. It's your whole cover it. Cover it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do, folks. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Mm-hmm. You are the one that turned me on to PewDiePie. I didn't know what a PewDiePie mm-hmm. was until you showed him to me. And then that spiraled into Markiplier. And then that spiraled into Jacksepticeye. And we love to watch. Um, our favorites were the PewDiePie um what were they called where happy he would wheels. happy wheels yes happy wheels mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. we would die i would damn near piss myself every time we'd watch these videos laughing so fucking hard at the <laughs> stupidest shit <laughs> this, is, this is just what we do she is my friend that i can be as stupid as fucking humanly possible with and it's just fine and mm-hmm. also my friend that we're also going to, we're going to get in. This is going to lead you into our little game here in just a minute. But her and I, we've, we decided this very recently. You and I have been able to stay friends as long as we have stayed friends because we share a multiple of the same mental illnesses. <laughs> so we, we like, struggle. We to don't stay. at our core <laughs> have, have like at our core, we probably don't have like the most in common because yeah. we just have different interests, like different tastes and things. In general, actually, we don't necessarily have the same like sense of humor. Like you like certain comedy movies, I don't care about. Like you know, I you know, there's certain comedy things like I don't, you know, I like, you know, you don't care about you know different types of movies. So it's not like you like different, you know, mostly different type of music. So it's not really that we have even like like extremely similar tastes. It's just. We just have this way of thinking and this way of how we, you know, navigate the world that I think just kind of helps, you know, we're like the kin that's like, oh, I found you, my pee in a pod when it comes to that sort of thing. We are very Mm -hmm. opposite ends of the pee pod. If there's three peas in Mm -hmm. a pod, we, there's a pee in between us somewhere. It's I'm one end, you're the other end. (laughs) And then there's somebody in the middle. We don't know who that is, but it's holding us together. We're still in the pod together. Mm -hmm. But we are just different enough to keep it interesting without being so different that we can't relate to each other. I think one of the special things about our friendship is that you are one of my friends that I can just 
share space with without Mm -hmm. needing to like entertain you. I don't have to, Mm -hmm. you don't have to entertain me. We don't have to even speak to each other half the time. You could be doing what you're doing. I'm it's doing what I'm doing. comfortable silence. Yeah, it's comfortable silence. And it's not awkward. And we're just enjoying, we're enjoying each other's company, believe it or not. Whether we're talking or we're watching a movie or I'm working on something and you're working on something else. We're enjoying our each other's company. Like we are just happy to be around each other. And that's good enough. And Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people who have friendships don't always have that little added layer of understanding with each other where it's like, you can just share my space and that's me interacting with you. And that's me showing you that I love you and I care about you. And you don't think I'm ignoring you. I don't think you're ignoring me. It just can be what it is. And I think that's, that's probably Mm -hmm. the most amazing thing about our friendship to me is us being able to comfortably just be in each other's presence and let that be enough. Mm-hmm. We can basically just be. Mm-hmm. We can just be. Yeah. Just really. And before we move into our little game, I do want to talk briefly about, ah, I just, it just put it together. Mark is the P in the middle of our pod. <laughs> <laughs> he is the, he is the middle of the Venn diagram. <laughs> yes. Tell the people who Mark is, Amanda. So Mark is my cousin. He is uh, three months older than I am. Um, we grew up together pretty much. He has a younger brother, but basically it was me and Mark. We even lived together for, I want to say, six years. And so Mark and I have our own set of, of jokes. He, he <laughs> knows nothing about, like, celebrities. Like, he'll know, like, enough about pop culture, but he kind of just stays in his own little bubble he plays games like watches youtube he's the one that convinced me to get like youtube premium i'm now i don't think i can live without youtube premium because now ads just insult me as a person (laughs) he uh just plays his games he listens to music he but yeah he's he's he just has a lot of a lot of inside jokes and he's just another person i can be comfortable with um i game with him every wednesday night actually we just kind of pick a game and play that online together but even with Nikki and Mark, we just have our own little inside jokes like money, 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 money. <laughs> and that was from some X-Men or Marvel game that we played. Um, so, yep, Mark's just Mark's just a, a good kid, as they say. He's just a good kid that he doesn't judge people. He is hilarious without even meaning to be like he doesn't even have to try. He just spouts things off. He's yeah. so witty and <laughs> Just hilarious. <laughs> like the time we were playing, I think it was that same game. So I was Captain Marvel in the game. And you need to understand something. Amanda and Mark are like actually good at video games and console games. Like <laughs> I am not. I enjoy them. I'm just not fucking good at them. So I usually would play like some third wheel character while they did all the ass beaten. And in this particular game, you would get money for things and they would beat all the ass and I would collect all the money. And so I would run around behind them as Miss Marvel. And in, the, in this particular game, she had quite the set of tatas in this game. And she was blonde. And, and she, she was blonde. blonde, which I was at the time. Yes, I was for a long time. Very blonde. And so I was the blonde with the big tits. And I would run around collecting all the money. So I was the gold digging whore. And y'all were beating all the ass. And that was just... <laughs> That was in in leather, in in leather, by the way, the gold thing wore in leather, (laughs) in leather. Yes. In leather. And so that was our little thing. And one day we were playing this, this exact same game. And I don't know if I asked why they call him professor dum dum, or if you asked, but one of us did. And he's Mark just up out of fucking nowhere without missing a fucking beat goes because smart, smart was taken. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah it was you because it was like the character dum dum dugan yeah that's what it is you're like why do they call him dum like and he's like because smart smart was taken and then i remember you just died like I you did. absolutely died and could not contain yourself <laughs> no i could not and it that probably was 16 years ago or close to and mm. we still to this day will say that shit to each other or for every once in a while not from <laughs> now on I have no brain calories left. Mm-hmm. This is going to be interesting. And then, <laughs> and then what's the other one? I wasn't with you that time. I don't think, but it was something about, 
K- Kmart, the Kmart one. That was my joke because I remember Mark and I were in Missouri. Um, I forgot why, but we were in Missouri and we were with my mom and his grandma. The, I guess they have like a set of like a grocery, not grocery, a gas station chain called D-Mart. And I think, so Mark was like, I wonder why they call it D-Mart. And I just immediately, because I think it was based off of Mark's original joke. I just said, because it did better in school than Kmart. And this, this is the comedic gold that is Amanda and Mark. <laughs> and I just somehow wiggled <laughs> my way into that genius. Somehow. My, I was the dirty money just grubbing yourself right in whore in, in leather that followed you around in video games. And then also <laughs> kind of stuck to you in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that's a little intro into into us we are the bestest of friends we can just kind of chill and be with each other we like i said before sort of have come to understand we share several of the same quote-unquote mental illnesses i like to call them um we are neurodivergent in similar ways sorry i keep sniffling i i'm like my nose is running. The weather cannot decide what it wants to do here in the state of Illinois. It's been, it's been raining all day here. Yeah. So I am like sniffly. I apologize to the people who are listening to me sniffle while I'm talking. But th- that kind of leads us into our game. So we're just going to get right into it. I have a little game called Can You Relate? The Neurodivergent Edition. First, let's tell the people what kind of neurodivergent we are. Whether it is formally diagnosed or suspected because it's incredibly hard to be formally diagnosed with anything as a fucking adult woman, but I am formally diagnosed with ADHD, which I've talked about before, anxiety, PTSD, and, oh, seasonal depression, and informally, but formally enough, diagnosed with autism. I have five. What about you? Mm -hmm. Just the good old regular depression. I get into that vicious cycle where I take the, you know, prescribed medication, and then you, because you think you're good enough, you're like, I don't need this anymore. And then you stop taking it. And then, of course, and then you get to the part where, wow, I'm not doing so well anymore. So you have to start taking it because you, but then I also get to the point where I almost get used to the medication and it doesn't work anymore. So then I have to switch to something else. So formally diagnosed with depression, kind of formally diagnosed with anxiety. Like I've talked to my doctor about it and they wanted to prescribe me something, but it was something I like a certain medication I didn't want, did not want to take and they weren't budging on it. So I've not taken anxiety medication. I am not diagnosed at all with like, like formally diagnosed with ADHD, but I heavily suspect that I am. Um, same with autism, just more the same, I like more that I read. So, but I, if I had to put a, a word on it, it would be high functioning autism. Uh, I think I'm just based on like not everything in the, on that list, but I think I'm kind of on that scale as well. Just how I, who I know that's high functioning autistic or like from what I read online, I even watched, it was like a 20 minute long video of like 15 signs that you may be autistic and not know about it. And I remember just writing down each one that I was, and I think I got 11 out of 15, but yeah, so, but I just never gotten, gotten into get formally diagnosed because I just honestly don't know where to start. Um, I don't know if my insurance covers that sort of thing. So I just have to basically just buck up and get in there basically. Yeah. And it is, I feel like this is a, a good conversation for another day, but briefly, I do want to touch on it. Like it is actually quite difficult to be diagnosed with autism especially, as a fully grown adult female who can drive a car and graduated college and owns a home and works a full-time job and can feed herself and can clothe herself and who is incredibly high functioning. It's really hard unless it's damn near undeniable because of how, how little you are able to function for your age it's really difficult to get diagnosed with it. Mm-hmm. It just is. And I, I hate mm-hmm. that because while there are so many resources like, you know, TikTok accounts, and I know it's TikTok, but there's some damn good shit on some of these 
um, accounts that I found on TikTok, um, Instagram accounts. There are YouTube videos, like you said. There are even um, self-diagnostic tests you can take that are put together by therapists and medical professionals that you can take. And, and I've taken those and you've taken those and, you know, we've compared our scores and, you know, it, it's gotten to a point where self-diagnosis is valid. It just is because it's difficult to get a formal diagnosis from a medical doctor unless you are low functioning. And also it's like you as a person know yourself more than anyone else. And so Basically, that's how I basically learned is like TikToks and stuff. It's like, wow, I'm like that too. Maybe I do this. It's kind of like, yeah, I can relate to that. So maybe that's what I am. Yeah. And that's the perfect segue. Let's get started into our game. So this is called Can You Relate? Neurodivergent Edition. I've made these things up. And, you know, this is a game where the everything's made up and the points don't matter. Like, whose line is it anyway? <laughs> So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll kick it off. So I'll kick it off. Um, she has the questions in front of her. I have the questions in front of me. I will kick it off with the first category of issues. And we're going to, I'll tell you if I can relate or not. And then you can tell me if you relate or not. And we'll just go on down the line. So first category is sensory issues. Do you have them? If you have them, what kind do you have? What's the worst kind of sensory experience for you? And what's the best kind of sensory experience for you? So I will start. Yes, I have sensory issues. All the goddamn sensory issues. Um, I am sensory averse for the most part. I do sensory seek in some fashions, um, but mostly I am sensory averse. Loud noises sudden loud noises to be exact to be exact sudden loud noises repetitive noises high pitch noises um i cannot stand the feel of notebook paper on my bare skin just a weird thing that's a sensory issue for me i think my by far my worst sensory experience or the thing that will set me off the quickest is when i'm listening to music And my kids are listening to a video on their tablet and also talking. It's too many noises happening at once. None of which are harmonious with each other. And I can maybe stand, maybe stand a full minute of that before I lose my shit. Which sucks for my kids, but it's this just the truth. My favorite sensory experience has to be a shower because a the water is calming b it's warm in there and c i can kind of stand there and just kind of zone out and there's generally nobody bothering me when i'm in the shower and second to my favorite sensory experience of a shower is a warm set of blankets right up out the dryer Like that is like sensory heaven for me, a hot, heavy, big old comforter. And you just bury yourself in it. And it's wonderful. That's my favorite sensory experience is being warm. Okay, go your turn. So sensory shoes to yes, for sensory averse, definitely probably one of my major ones is running my hand or like the bottom of my feet on carpet not walking on carpet walking on carpet is fine but even as a kid like I hated the feeling of rubbing my hand on carpet and even just watching people do it just sends like a tingle up my spine I'm not like for sound it's more like I guess touch things like I I can't wear a shirt that doesn't go past like the waist of my pants because I hate the feeling of my skin open to the air Same with, like, if I'm wearing long pants, I have to be wearing longer socks. I can't wear ankle socks because I don't want my pants to write up and I feel my ankles exposed like a Victorian woman, you know, scandalous. So mine's, like, touch. Loud noises don't really bother me. Like, I can go to concerts and be fine. Fireworks don't bother me. I think it's more like droning noises. Like, I work in in a call center, so sometimes I have to go to another room and basically just chill out and decompress when I just hear too many people talking at once 
probably my biggest trigger is people whistling like when they're whistling a song they don't really have to whistle like a come here whistle type of thing but just whistle like when they're whistling a song in general or just nonsense just irritates the fuck out of me for probably worst sensory experience i'm not really sure i have one like a particular one just in general like i like i said there's a a room in where in my workplace where i will go it's quiet it's dark so i'll just go there and kind of just put my hands over my ears and close my eyes and kind of just drown try to drown everything out that i'm listening to i don't really seek certain things i i like i don't think like a fidget spinner or anything like any fidgeting things really do me any good Probably, I, I think ever since I was a kid, I would just love feeling like like running my hands under a faucet. It feels really good. I like the feeling of bear- wearing like a big hoodie. So anything where I can just feel comfort, that sort of thing. But yeah, that's pretty where I am for sensory. So it's definitely more of a touch thing. Like I hate feeling my hair where it feels like a spider is running down your side. So not really sounds unless it's just a bunch of sounds at once and I just can't process them. Yeah, it sounds like we're pretty similar on that one. So we can definitely relate to sensory issues. Okay, so let's move on to the next kind of category. This one is processing emotions slash empathy. So something that people hear or or associate a lot, especially with autism, is like you don't understand emotion you don't understand other people's emotion you have a hard time being empathetic and it's kind of like a general i feel like it's a generalization that's actually most of the time not 100 percent correct so for me i feel all the feels all the time and the way that i have learned to cope with that or process that is, I mean, generally unhealthy, but I had to kind of turn them all off for a long time. So my coping mechanism was figuring out how to shut shit down so that I wasn't overwhelmed all the time with my own emotions, other people's emotions, because when I do feel things, I feel them intensely, incredibly intensely. There is no small feeling. If it's sad, it's hysterical. If it's angry, it's furious. If it's happy, it's overjoyed, you know? So I tend to feel things bigger no matter what the emotion is. And so processing all of that for me sometimes leaves me with feeling like I don't know how to sort it all out. Like I don't know how to regulate all of that all the time. So I have to, like, I'm not a person who can have something happen to her and then immediately be able to be like, well, that made me feel X, Y, Z. Because I can't always trust my initial feeling on a situation because a lot of times it is it's disproportionate. Because if I'm if, if it's a feeling, I'm feeling it extra all the time. So if someone makes me mad, that mad is so strong that it's the only thing I'm thinking about. So I have to have time between the situation and figuring out how I feel about it. There has to be some kind of time in between there so that I can properly calm down, assess the situation, figure out, okay, what was my part in this or what was their part or how do I really feel about this? It requires time that makes any sense. Because I'm very empathetic and I feel everybody else's shit at the same time, it requires time and space for me to be alone, to process what is my feelings and what is everybody else's shit that I've absorbed in the day. What about you? I feel like I'm a very empathetic, like empathetic person. I just have a feeling like mine's more inward than outward. I can cry very easily. Just show me a sappy montage show me puppies in a video just anything like crying i had like kind of like outbursts as a kid not like full on tantrums like my parents will always tell you like i was a very quiet kid like i could get emotional sometimes but i was a very quiet kid like i just remember like my mom you know back in the day when you could leave your kid in the car and be fine and not get cps called on you like my mom would go inside the store and I'd be in the car and I would feel like she's taking too long and I would just have a full on like crying fit 
like I, I remember specifically working um at the movie theater i remember i was crying for some reason and i had a worker who i considered a friend that said i just can't imagine you crying you just seem not emotionless you just don't seem like you would cry i said and i told her i know i cry a lot like i cry so much and then like people think i don't like hugs i i do i do and like really like hugs so i feel like i'm very empathetic but i'm i'm it's hard for me to express that with people like if someone is going through something it's hard for me to voice how i'm feeling like i feel really bad for them and i can relate to how they're feeling but like it's almost like the sheldon with the the meme of him like patting penny with a broom like they're there it'll be fine you're you're fine it's almost like that sort of thing i i can get overly angry like I, I have a coworker who can tell when I, I, I can, I'll snap at her sometimes, and knows that, like, okay, maybe leave Amanda alone because she's being short with me, and that's usually when I'm feeling overwhelmed. So I have no problem with other people's feelings. I, I told my boss one day, like when she was congratulating me something, and she goes, "You're not really reacting." I said. Well, I can neither accept nor deny your criticisms and your commendations, so just please let me go back to my job because I don't know how to process what you're telling me. I can't handle criticism, and I, but I also can't handle you praising me. I, it's very awkward, so I guess I probably do have problems self-regulating emotions because like, I just don't know how to act. Basically, the mesh of wires and yarn and basically just a bundle of floof in my brain like how to properly voice what I'm feeling at the moment so when people ask me like how are you feeling it just like do you want a dissertation because do you have all day because I can go into it if you want so basically that's how how that's how it is for me yeah that actually brings up a good point where you're mentioning like it's hard for you to articulate into words like come when you're comforting someone else like the way that i relate to people when they're in pain often looks like me making it about myself or the way that i relate to people when they're telling me a story about something that happened to them if it happened to me i'm like oh my god i know how you feel because that happened to me except for it comes out like and most people think that i'm like, like you're one up about me yeah yeah and so that has given me a lot of awkward situations in my life because I feel the same. When people are really going through terrible things in their life, especially like hard things, if I let myself, I can physically feel pain for that person and I will cry and it will be like it's happening to me. But because I know from living life that that's not helpful, I've kind of learned to not go there but then that also keeps me from being able to articulate to them my condolences or especially in those difficult situations. It's like I almost don't know what to say. I know what I feel, but I don't know how to tell you what I'm feeling. So and also it's like you think about a good response. Like you said, it takes you a while to process something. You think about a good response way too late after the fact like i don't remember what it was but i had like a coworker going through something not too long ago and i it was probably i was probably about 10 minutes too late before i wanted to express my either condolences or like basically the time had passed yeah and i feel like you mentioned the compliments thing too it, it took me a really long time to figure out the appropriate response to a compliment i don't know what the correct answer to you telling me something good about myself is <laughs> <laughs> like, am I supposed to mm -hmm. say, oh my God, thank you. I know. Like, because mm -hmm. sometimes I right. do know you're telling me something and it's like, yeah, I know I'm good at that. But you can't say, yeah, thanks. I know. Because then you sound like an arrogant asshole. <laughs> you can't say that. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So it's like right. figuring out what's socially acceptable to say to you in this moment. We have, it, it's so much harder. We have to be like, almost like detectives we have to look around and study other people and how normal people fucking interact and what normal people do when someone gives them a compliment and then try to do that thing well it's kind of like i remember one time i think it might have been like spanish one i remember like we had to like have a list of like adjectives like we would win order say out loud one you would 
consider yourself to be. We're halfway down the class, and I remember just saying out loud, just close enough for like you know Jacob to hear. I said, "I'm surprised no one has said intelligent yet." I remember Jacob saying, "Well, it's kind of like it would be kind of arrogant of somebody to call themselves intelligent." And I just thought that was the strangest thing. Like, okay, I guess I'll choose another word when someone like says, "Oh, you're so like you know so smart to think of it." I'm like maybe i guess <laughs> don't know just just don't look at me please i, I can't take compliments <laughs> just and then because if you try like you're like yes i know i am then you look like a bragger you look like an absolute jerk like then you look arrogant yeah it's it's always been something i've weirdly struggled with i want to go back to this topic but add on like small talk and social interaction mm-hmm. like socially acceptable interaction with acquaintances so we'll circle back to that yeah. when we hit the potpourri category but i it sounds like we're pretty similar with that too but i want to move mm-hmm. on to our next category which is food i know that for some people they might be thinking food why the fuck is that got to do anything with being neurodivergent but it, it very much does um the questions are like do you keep a rotation of the same kinds of foods or meals Can you eat at a restaurant without Googling the menu first? Um, Do you have any sensory issues specifically around food? Um, One that I forgot to put in there is like, do you have any quote unquote safe foods? Like a food that you know, if nothing else sounds good or you can't find something in your fridge, like you know that there is, you always keep one thing in the house that you know if nothing else sounds good, but you know you have to eat. You can eat that food and not be, not have any sensory issues with it, not worry about not liking it. It's just your safe food. So for me, I, we tend to have a rotation of meals in my house, but for me, it's a little different. So like, okay, this is a perfect example. I can't eat dairy and we all know this about me. (laughs) And so (laughs) I found this vegan and when i was strictly gluten free for a while i found a vegan and gluten free macaroni and cheese it's annie's brand okay and it's like the craft mac and cheese with the powder cheese in a box right and when i first started working feeding myself was really hard me trying to make decisions as to what i was going to eat for dinner after being at work all day and peopling all day long and doing all of that was it just seemed way harder than it had to be to feed myself But I knew that I loved this damn macaroni and cheese. So I shit you not, for a solid week, that's all I ate. For sometimes breakfast, lunch, and dinner was chicken nuggets and this damn mac and cheese, okay? Then, all of a sudden, I was like, I don't want to eat it anymore. It's not that I quit liking how it tastes. It's none of that. It's just my brain decided that it has sucked every last ounce of dopamine it could suck out of this particular food, and now I'm over it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. then we move on to something else. Um, right now, for me, I'm kind of in between things, but right now it's smoothie bowls, like with granola. So like I'll make an extra super thick smoothie and then put granola and hemp seeds on it. And sometimes I eat it for breakfast. Sometimes I eat it for dinner. It just depends but it's in rotation for my day. I am an adventurous eater. Like I will try foods. I don't really have a lot of sensory issues when it comes to food. Very few actually. Um, I don't, there's not a lot of foods I actually don't like. It's whether or not my brain will let me eat them. And I know that that sounds so strange to someone who doesn't like deal with this and doesn't struggle with this, but sometimes my brain will not let me eat a food that is my favorite thing to eat. I just can't eat it. I can't explain to you why I can't eat it. If I am like, this is all I have cooked, but my brain does not want this damn macaroni and cheese, depending on how badly I don't want it, sometimes it will make me gag. I can't explain it. It's very strange. Um, And it seems to be correlated with like the more stressed out I am, the harder it is for me to adequately feed myself. So it's something that I, I struggle with with that. And then, of course, meds. I take medication for my ADHD. And so I have a hard time recognizing when I'm hungry, especially when my medication was just recently upped for my ADHD. So I'm on a higher dose now and it's working better. But that also means my appetite is pretty much gone. So I also have to eat when I'm not hungry, which can also be frustrating because I know I have to eat it. But I have a hard time eating when I'm not actually physically getting a hunger cue from my body. So I had to kind of rewire my brain to 
eat something, even if it's little, even when I'm not hungry, because my body physically needs the food, but I'm not going to feel the hunger cue because of my medication. I kind of answered sensory issues and then the first question at the same time, but can you, this one's funny because I already know your answer (laughs) to this question, but (laughs) I can't eat at a restaurant without Googling the menu first. It doesn't matter if it's the same kind of food I like to eat all the time. It does it, like we could go to a Mexican restaurant. Damn near every Mexican restaurant in the United States has the same fucking shit on their menu in some variation, shape, or form. I still want to Google the menu. I still want to look at what they have because I have to be mentally prepared ahead of time before I go into that restaurant because decision making when I'm sitting there knowing these people want to take my order, it's overwhelming. So like I want to have my decision damn near made for myself before I go to the restaurant. What about you? Mm -hmm. Same. Like I don't always like if especially it's a restaurant I had been at plenty of times. Basically, I just have like certain meals I get at certain restaurants and I do not stray from that. I will always get either a chicken nachos or chicken quesadilla from the Mexican restaurant. I went with Scott, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, we went to Panera. I've been to Panera dozens of times. I know what they serve. They serve freaking soup and freaking sandwiches. I still looked at their menu. It's like I said, part of an anxiety thing where you feel like the person's waiting for you to make a decision. Like, and I hate being the person that says, can I have a few more minutes, please, while I make make this decision so i if that's it's mostly an anxiety thing it's it, but it, it, part of it is like i want to just make sure they have food i'll eat for me i i even like even before i even considered myself maybe possibly like being adhd or autistic is i several years have referred to myself as a text reader there's not very many flavors i don't like absolutely hate like i don't care for seafood but probably 99% of the foods I will not eat is because of texture. If I'm biting into a hamburger and I bite into like a hard piece or a piece of gristle, I will not finish that hamburger. I will spit out what I have in my mouth into my napkin. Like I went out to like a Chinese buffet. I did not want to go to the Chinese buffet. I I will preface this. I I have, I've had stomach surgery, so I cannot eat a lot. So part of that is just price reasons. Like I don't want to pay $15 for one plate of food. I remember I was like, oh, a pork dumpling. That sounds good. And I bit into it, had bits of stuff I did not recognize. I immediately spit it out, did not eat what else was on, on there. And I do keep a rotation of things like and I feel so bad because I probably weekly but weekly like Scott Granger Zach and I will do like a dinner and they have so much more worldly palettes than I do where I'm like their five-year-old child that they have to help out with food where I will like I will gladly eat your enchilada soup I will gladly eat every single vegetable in there as long as you puree it if you puree it like I am a baby then I will eat it because the flavor, amazing. I will gladly eat that flavor. But if I bite into, like, an onion, uh, like, I will douse everything in onion powder. No problem. But if I bite into a piece of onion, that meal is ruined, and you have ruined my life with it. So please don't do that. Like I said, flavor things are fine with me. It's texture all the way. And so I keep a rotation right now. My, the thing I have in my fridge and like my pantry is bread, eggs, and I just finished off some kielbasa. Basically, I've just been doing breakfast food. Like I think I went with like with terms of rotation. I think I went a whole week where I ate nothing but pancakes for dinner. And what I do is because I work right across the street from Kroger. I will take my reusable bag because a reusable bag is just enough to feed me for a week like monday through friday for dinner and so i will take my original bag to kroger buy that amount of food like basically and eat that meal five times sometimes it's a bag of pierogies like because like i think like 25 pierogies in a bag i, I eat five pierogies at a time i will eat pro nothing but pierogies for dinner and then then i'll be tired of pierogies and then so next time will be breakfast for dinner and next time will be pasta and then so i I have been really ever since COVID and it's not like necessarily because I don't want to go to like to the store like I'm 
like scared to go to the store. It's just ever since COVID, I'm not sure why I've been really bad at grocery shopping. That's why I only I only grab like a bag's worth of food every time I shop because I get to the point where if I buy two to three weeks worth of food, if I buy in bulk, I will probably not like the food I just bought a week from now. I will not feel like eating it and I, then it'll just eventually rot or I'll ignore it. Like, I think I probably have to throw And Like, Nikki has helped me clean out my pantry several times because I will buy stuff on a whim at it or it just doesn't sound good after I bought it. And so I will just not eat it. So I definitely buy, like, probably four to five days worth of food at a time because I just can't comprehend liking something a week after I buy it. How do people, how do people buy a month at a time or, like, go to Sam's Club or Costco. I will never know. It's, to me, personally, it's wasteful. Like, other people that work for them, that's fantastic. But to me, it's wasteful because that food will just go bad by the time I get to it. Yeah, I have that same problem. I think you and you actually helped me to understand that a little bit more. I would get frustrated with myself. We'd grocery shop for a week, and I'd plan out meals. And then by the time I got to that meal, if I don't want it, I physically can't eat it. It's not me being a brat. It's not me being picky. I physically can't bring myself to eat something I don't want to eat. Mm -hmm. And so it would go bad. Yeah. Veggies would spoil or the meat would go bad because I'd forget to cook it because I didn't want to eat it that day. And then I would forget about it. I've yet to figure out exactly how to make it work for me because I am not one person. I'm a family of four. So I can't just decide I'm not going to the grocery store every day that week because <laughs> yes. I can't do it and then we're at McDonald's every day do you know what I mean it, it just doesn't work for our family so I don't know what the fuck the answer is for that I have not figured it out yet yeah that that's my main issue right now with with grocery shopping it's just like I, I, I will be good sometimes and eat an entire week of salad like I will grill chicken and I will hard boil eggs and make my own like my buy I think a salad dressing and salad and be perfectly good but then like after that week is over i'd never want to see another salad in my life do not ever show me salad see that's the whole, whole thing of like food issues i could eat salad all day every day but do not put like what you put in a salad on a sandwich and give it to me because i will not eat it i will pick off everything but the meat and cheese yeah so okay moving on to our second to last little category here which is time management and just time in general so in this category, I have, um, are you always late or always early? Deadlines, blessing or curse? Time blindness or under or overestimating the time it takes to complete a task or the time it might take you to do a certain thing. Um, and then getting stuck in waiting mode when you have like an appointment or something poorly placed in your day. So... I used to be consistently early for everything. And I think you know that about me. Like if it, if I was 30 minutes or less before the time I was supposed to be somewhere, I was in full blown panic attack mode because I was going to be late. Me showing up somewhere less than 30 minutes early as like a teenager would give me fucking anxiety. I used to show up an hour early before school started so that I could sit on in our little bench in high school, our little bench area and, and eat my breakfast and chill the fuck out and talk. I don't, I didn't like to be rushed. Rushing gave me anxiety. So if I could just get my ass everywhere early, then I would have time to like calm down, to focus and get kind of stuck in. And I still don't love being on right on time or late for anything. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. The older I get and the more things I'm responsible for, I find myself running late more often, but I still don't like it. A part of that is anxiety for me. I, I just don't like it. I, and I don't like to be rushed. So that, that rushing causes anxiety. So my default mode is not, fuck it, I'll get there when I get there. It's get your ass there with plenty of time to calm your neurotic ass down so you can focus on what it is you're supposed to be doing when you're there. Deadlines, for me, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it say there's something due, especially high school is a great example for this. We could have had a big fucking paper due in English. I would have waited until 
probably the night before the paper was due to cram it all in, stay up until one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, finishing this paper and turn in a better paper than if I would have blocked out an hour a night to work on that massive paper. Uh, that ha- that has a lot to do with the fact that I am very good under pressure. I am very good under pressure. I don't like being under pressure for long periods of time. And I don't like the anxiety and the panic that comes along with being under pressure. But that double-edged sword is I actually perform really well under pressure. A lot of times deadlines for me kind of work into the waiting mode a little bit too. If I know something's due at a certain time, but I also know that I'm going to be better if I wait to the last minute, I almost get stuck. Like I can't work on the thing until last minute. Or if it's something I really don't want to do, like a fucking English paper, because who wants to do a fucking English paper? So studying for tests, you can fucking forget about it. I don't think I ever studied for a single test of any class ever in my whole fucking life. Everyone lost their shit over the SATs and shit we had to take and all of that. I couldn't have given two furry fucks. I didn't care. I wasn't going to pass that thing with flying colors anyway. And I knew my stupid ass wasn't going to make it in college because I didn't (laughs) care to go to college. So I did not give a fuck. Everyone was ripping their hair out, crying, not sleeping. And I was like, I don't don't give a fuck. It's a, it's a piece of paper. And if it tells me I'm stupid, that's fine. It can tell me I'm stupid. I I have no, I give no shits. I don't know. I just was never a good, a good student in that way. I wasn't, I didn't give a fuck. It, it, It was not interesting to me. The only classes that I actually did really well in or got an A in were classes or even like um sections of class or like you know what do they call those chapters or i don't know i don't know what the word is i'm looking for because brain um subjects like subjects within a class Mm -hmm. things we would be studying within a class if like a certain part of that class or a certain thing we were learning about was interesting i'd do great on the test i would retain everything and then the next lesson could come along lesson that's what it was that's the word i was looking for (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> lesson the next lesson would come along and i would get a fucking barely enough of a grade to pass and not give a fuck time blindness um is something that i struggle with um quite a bit i overestimate the amount of time it's been since something happened giving this example like say in a day we get a phone call at work and it's an order i was supposed to take will say, someone will ask me about that order. Well, and they'll say, well, what time was that? Be like, I don't know, several hours ago. And they'll be like, it's only been like 20 minutes. <laughs> so I, ha- I'm, I have a weird relationship with time in that way. And I think a lot of that has to do with like, I have a very poor short-term memory. Very poor. I have an elephant brain when it comes to long-term memories. Hence how I can remember our inside jokes from 16 years ago, you know, (laughs) or a song can come on that I haven't heard in fucking years. And I will still remember every word to that song. Like those kind of things I do well with, but I can't, I can't with normal time things. Time is irrelevant in my life. (laughs) It doesn't make sense. It's like Alice in Wonderland in my brain when it comes to time. I will often underestimate how long something is going to take me to do. If someone's like, okay, we have this, 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 and this to do today. I'm like, oh, we can get that all done today. That's not a problem. Well, the first task is probably going to take me two hours to do because I'm not planning for interruptions. I'm not planning for, you know, the phone ring, whatever, right? I will underestimate the amount of time it takes to complete this big list of fucking tasks that I want to do in a day and then get mad at myself when I didn't do it all. Well, in reality, I was never going to have time to do all of that anyway, because I was underestimating the amount of time that it was going to take to be successful at what I'm doing. And then getting stuck in waiting mode for me is the worst fucking feeling in the world. And I didn't quite have words for that until thankfully I follow all of these accounts on um, Instagram and there's these graphics that are so helpful that I don't, I couldn't even tell you what account it is from this at this point, but it explained like 
waiting mode and what that is. And it's like you have a 2 p.m. appointment. I don't know about you, but come 2 p.m. in a day, these brain cells are done. Like they're just done. I, I, I can't function. I would have been up since about 530 in the morning and I would have probably either parented or peopled from then until fucking two. Or if I'm off that day, that's even worse. Like I, if I have a two o'clock appointment like my hair appointment the other day on Saturday this is the perfect example I will either be dressed and ready to go like four hours early and then I can't do a fucking thing else until that appointment happens and then like 30 minutes before I'll be like running around trying to hurry up and get out the house and I'll somehow still be running late or I'll be stuck and can't do shit not even get ready not nothing until at least an hour beforehand. It just fucks me up. Like, I can't explain it. it. It's it's difficult to explain. Having a poorly placed appointment in my day or a poorly placed task that needs done, it throws me off. And it, it, especially if it's something I'm looking forward to, like a hair appointment, it is difficult for me to do anything else because I'm waiting for that exciting thing to happen. And so that's, that's kind of what waiting mode is for me. Um, what about you? Yeah, waiting mode... I don't know if I really have that problem. I just, I, I don't have as many appointments as you. So like if I have a dentist appointment, I usually do it like first thing in the morning. So that way I could go there and get to work. If I so happen to be, have a day off and I have an appointment, then I kind of just lounge around. I don't really know. Like, I don't feel like I can do anything else. Like I can't run errands. Like I can't get like shit done. Like can't clean my house in the meantime. I'll either like, I am the opposite. I am like the very definition of a night person. I work eight to five and it just kills me on the inside and my soul because I am not a morning person. Slash, I'm not particularly grumpy in the morning. I just, I just thrive better. Like if I could have like, if I could work from like 12 PM to like 8 PM or like 12 to nine what my best when i can sleep until like 11 12 p.m my work prevents me from having like a lot of appointments to where i have a waiting mode so i don't really know that sort of feeling i guess like like i said it's either in the middle of the day or at the beginning of my work day um i'm not i don't think i'm really late i'm not really a late or early person like i get anxiety if i'm late like I'm rarely late for work. Like no matter what job I've had, rarely late for work. I don't like being particularly early because I just feel like I could have spent that time in bed. That extra five minutes I am spending at work, that's wasted. That could have been bedtime. That could have been more time just laying in bed staring at the ceiling. I don't. I don't want to spend my five minutes of that extra bedtime at work where I don't want to be. I might get there five ten minutes early. Same thing with like hanging out with people. I don't want to feel like I'm imposing on them by coming too early. I know like there's, I see on TikTok and Instagram or whatever, they'll joke like how like American culture is like we're early or on time for everything. Whereas like if you invite someone to a four o'clock party and they arrive at six, that's perfectly normal. Granted, I'm not that way. But like if I, if I say four o'clock, you better not show up at like 345 because I will still be in my pajamas and probably brushing my hair. So uh, like or cleaning my house because I will clean my house because someone is coming over like I can live in my house like as as you've seen my house Nikki helped me get rid of half of my possessions basically because I'm not necessarily a hoarder I'm just very sentimental okay I have a lot of feelings but I'm the same way when it comes to like right like doing prestation even like I think even like fourth grade we had like this major like science project that I had my mom help me. I was that kid that had my mom go out and get like a whiteboard at like eight o'clock at night the night before, like a big project was due. But I, but I also remember one of my classes in college, I got an A on paper for a paper on like Turkish history or something like that. It was like based in like Mesopotamia, Turkey, that sort of area. I got an A on that paper. No idea what I was talking about, but I finished that paper and then promptly walked from the, the library to the class and turned that paper in. And so I do bet, like I said, I don't like being under pressure. It gives me major anxiety. Please, like, I'm like an Instapot. You can't just, I will 
just explode if you're let, if my life's alone too long. Please don't do that to me. But I can work well under pressure to where I'll give my best work. Scott was the one who reminded me of this to where he's like, didn't you turn in a paper in high school where you kind of just made up the citations? And I don't recommend this, children. But I said, yes, because I wrote that paper. It was a like a one of the like the three research papers we wrote that semester. And so we were supposed to spend like like two months on the like like six weeks to two months on this one paper. Just no, just kill me. I remember because I knew my teacher was not going to check these citations because I was using correct books. Like I was using real books, but I was making up the page number. Like I would basically just type out what my thought was about whatever I was writing about and then just make up what page it came from, like, and out of the book that I was supposedly read for this paper. But I finished that paper and got really good on that paper and, like, did really well on it. But, like I said, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I can't work on something forever because then I'm, I'm kind of like a perfectionist where I just nitpick it to death. Like you, like you, I underestimate how long something will take. Like, my manager at Barnes & Noble when I worked there knew I took longer for projects and he understood that and because I am such a perfectionist I ha it has to be done right like otherwise it will bug me and I might as well just I'll spend more time trying to fix it than I if you just had given me more time in the beginning to work on it like it would take me not twice as long but longer to like do a project set something up like shell books than it would for other people but it's because I had, I had, would then get distracted. It's like, oh, well, I'm shelving these books, but I noticed that the shelf above the books that I'm shelving are out of order. So I've got to fix that, that sort of thing. And like, same thing, my projects at my current job, like, just takes me longer than what normal people think. And like, tests in school took me longer. I always, I typically, you know, finish tests before they were done, but I was probably one of the last people to turn them in because I just, either doubt myself or I just under underestimate how long but when it comes to like time management in general like or estimating how much time has passed I'm actually really good at that like Mark Mark and I joke that we have like the latest superpowers Mark's superpower is like luck like he's just lucky in general and where I am mine is time but I like I can put something in the oven and ignore it like, you know, put a timer on, ignore it for like 20 minutes. And I will like, like, well, like, let's go check on that thing in the oven. And I will get up within 10 seconds, nearly every time within 10 seconds of that oven going off. Like, we'll be, I'll be walking outside with someone, like we'll be hiking or something. And they're like, I wonder what time it is. And it's not like I'm looking at the sun. It's not like I'm, you know, Columbus over here. I just say, uh, I assume it's about one thirty, and I had not looked at the clock for hours, and it would be like one twenty-five, like because I'm just, I guess, good at estimating time. So that's not really my issue. It's more like I just underestimate how much time has, like, how much time how, underestimate how much time. Wow, words English. How much time something will take me, but I don't really overestimate how much time has passed. But yeah, like, so I guess deadlines. I was watching, like, I think it was probably one of the, the autistic or ADHD videos I was watching uh, not too long ago to where it was, like, some people do well with deadlines, um, and it could, like, but a lot of ADHD people, you can't give them deadlines, you have to give them, like, a sort of thing, but I can't remember what the phrase they use, but for me, it's like, it honestly just depends on what the thing is. Like, if it's something I enjoy doing, I'll do it immediately. You don't have to give me a deadline. I'll do it immediately. It's fine. But if it's something I don't want to do, then I will wait until the very last second to do it because I'm just pushing off. So that's a uh, like time. Time stuff has not really ever been a problem for me. For probably probably like seventy five percent of this of this list, not really an issue. Like that's we we are very similar in a lot of that. But I. I am not good with time. I never have been. And you are. And I, I can second that. This girl is absolutely a fucking wizard when it comes to that damn oven timer. Like, the brownies, <laughs> yeah, I will burn some shit. I will take it out too early or, or too late. You can cook a brownie like nobody's business <laughs> because you are on point with that damn timer on that oven, woman. That's what it is. <laughs> you do, you follow the exact directions 
and you put it in for the exact amount of time and you don't fuck around. You don't give it an extra minute. You don't take it out before it's done. You're like, no, it said 22 minutes. It's 22 minutes and it ain't going to come out 10 seconds before 22 minutes. And it's the perfect (laughs) shit every fucking time. But moving on, let's go to our like general potpourri, like lightning round. So Mm -hmm. we don't have to elaborate a hell of a lot because this is a lot of different shit kind of thrown into one category. I'm going to, we're just going to go like point by point. I'll do one, you do like, I'll answer it, then you answer it, and then we'll move on to the next point. So my first line is hyper focus slash rabbit holes. Do you find yourself in those quite often? If so, like, how do you sort of snap yourself out of those? So yes, I have hyper focus and it's generally on tasks that I am incredibly interested in, um, which is where I can, I can lose time. Um, And then rabbit holes for me are more of special, like special interest things. So for example, I'm really into astrology right now. So when I am really into a topic, I call that going down a rabbit hole because I will literally follow every white rabbit I find related to that topic and go down the hole, every one of them. And I will have learned so many things about so many different things. I call myself like a jack of all trades, but a master of none, because I like to know a little bit about a lot of things. And I learn a little bit about a lot of things and a lot of it about very few things because of my hyper focus and my rabbit holes. What about you? Mm-hmm. Same. Like I remember growing up as a kid that I never could figure out what I wanted to do with a life because I never had enough interest to like I want to make that my job. Oh my god! Like, I want to do that for the rest of my life because I because I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine doing the same thing every single day for the rest of my life, and so. I remember I just recently, like I said, did the whole hyperfixation thing where I think the month of July and maybe part of August, I was heavily invested in budgeting videos. (laughs) Nikki will tell you, I don't have an issue with money. No, never has. I I don't keep a budget. Like, I just don't really spend money. And so, but I need budgeting tools. I need the the personal budget (laughs) life planner. You are financially secure. Okay. I am a financial fucking hot mess. Go on. So I, but I watched hours and hours of budgeting videos because I just found it interesting. Now I'm why uh, there's this new, uh, like a YouTube channel new to like called Fundy Fridays. And it's just this person that just talks about different like sex of like sex, S E C T S, of fundamentalist, fundamentalism, like Christian fundamentalism. And it's just like fascinating. She's like, so, and like rabbit holes, Wikipedia, definitely Wikipedia. Like, let's click every single hyperlink. And then, so you start off thinking about, you know what? What did happen in World War II? And then eventually you get to, well, how long is a giraffe pregnant for? And how much does the baby weigh? It's like, how did I get here? Oh my like, God. What is so just random? Like, let's just Google this thing and then spend three hours reading about this thing and then other things that because you clicked on the random links and same with, with the suggested videos section on YouTube. Yeah. I I feel that. So the next question, it, we've kind of already talked about it. So I don't, we're not really going to talk about it, but I had like inability to focus on an uninteresting task or topic. Like we covered that basically, like it's difficult for us to be invested or motivated to do things that we're just incredibly uninterested in. I'm, I'm painfully incapable of doing things that I am just not interested in doing. Same for you. Like I'd rather sit and stare. Yeah, I'd rather sit and stare. Then, like, I have a tray that I keep at work of, like, paperwork I need to do. Like, sometimes I'll get through that tray, no problem. Like, you know, things that need to, that I need to send off to other people. Like, some stuff that isn't necessarily time sensitive can stay in there for a while. And I just, because I just don't want to do it. And, like, I have probably two pieces of paper in there right now that I can think of that I know that I just, I have probably to do tomorrow, but I just don't want to. <laughs> so I'll be forced to do it. Yeah. And at some point when it comes down to a deadline, though, those papers will be done, right? Like, Mm -hmm. if you were like, shit, it's Tuesday at 5 o'clock and these are due at 5.30, they will be done within 30 minutes and sent off and be done. But because you didn't have a timeline, Mm -hmm. you're like, it's fine. But, okay, so the next one is difficulty 
Yeah. Difficulty transitioning from task to task, especially if the first one is either unfinished or you're in a, a hyper fixation with that thing. I find this less difficult unless it's like I have a hard time leaving things unfinished. It it bothers me. Um, but at the same time, well, I guess it's because I know that a lot of times if I get distracted from what I'm doing or I stop that task, I most likely will not come back to it and finish it. And it'll either be mm-hmm. left there unfinished like that, like your piece of paper in your tray for fucking ages. Or I will not be able to be as focused on it the next time and it might not be finished the way I'd like it to be finished. I don't like being interrupted when I'm in the middle of something that I'm trying that I know has to be finished, right? As far as transitions go, I don't have as big of a problem with transitioning. It's more so when I really need to finish this task because if I don't, I'm going to forget. And then I get irritated. What about you? Yeah, because I answer emails at work and have different emails, messages. There's like probably five different ways for people to contact me. Annoying. Basically, if I get an email and this person says, I need you to do this thing. If I don't do it right then, I normally will not forget to do something. It just might, I might not come back to it for like an hour or two. And I'm like, oh crap, I gotta do that thing. Let me do that thing. I told my boss this. It is kind of hard for me to transition test to test. Like if I'm hyper-focused on something because... I'm in a zone. I'm in like a mode where it's like, I got to finish this thing. I'm working on this thing. I'm doing great work on this thing. I have to finish it or it will not get done. And like, I'm with interruption. I will literally tell my coworker, just no, leave me alone for just give me 15 minutes and I will just give me what I need to do to get this done. Otherwise it will not get done. So please let me finish this email. Let me finish this spreadsheet. Let me finish this thing. And then I will get back to you. Yeah, same. Okay. So next one is burnout. Easily burnt out, are you? Yes. I do not function at a high level for very long periods of time. I can function at a high level for short periods of time, short bursts, but I have, we we call this spoon theory. I only have so many spoons and when I've used all the spoons, we're done for the day and tomorrow's another day and I'll have to wake up in the morning and and by the time I wake up, my spoons will be nice and washed and clean and I can start over. But I still only have them same amount of spoons for the next day. And when the spoons are gone, they're gone. And I generally have less spoons than most people do. You might have a household that has 20 spoons. I have four. I have four. Mm-hmm. That's it. And it leaves it leads me to burnout because we live in a society that requires you to operate with 20 spoons. And if you only have four spoons mm-hmm. and you don't have a way to get more spoons because your brain says no more spoons, you still have to figure out how to compensate for the 16 spoons you don't have. Mm-hmm. And that leads to burnout for me. What about you? Yeah, the I think I'm in a period right now with burnout where I showed you the pictures of my my closet. I basically reorganized and just completely decluttered my closet and my bathroom, like reorganized everything. Well, because I did that, now I have enough dopamine to do other things around my house. So let's organize this. Let's do this. I, you know, now I, okay, I'm like, I need to now go through my clothes and just sort them. Like, I'm trying to lose weight right now, so I'm not wanting to get rid of clothes that are smaller, but I'm, you know, wanting to, um, like, just sort them to, like, get them sorted out of my clothes that I can wear right now. Right now, I'm looking at my couch currently of the clothes that I am sorting for probably three weeks now because I have not had the mental energy like I'm looking at them on my couch right now to where I do not have it in me to go through basically it's like four pairs of pants three shirts and like a like quarter filled garbage bag of where I'm going to be like clothes to donate that's it can't bring myself to do it because I spent all my energy doing other things and I just get home from work and I just don't want to do it and so I just haven't had that of dopamine yet to where I have like or that sense of accomplishment like well I did this thing so now I can accomplish these other things so I just have to wait for that my cycle to come back to me same and it's frustrating because you never know when it's going to return and it returns at the most inconvenient times and it and you use up your energy and all your dopamine at the most inconvenient times and it's it can be really frustrating and that kind of slides nicely into our next point, which is not being able to people for very long. I have an incredibly low threshold for social interaction 
And the more that I'm doing, the more, the, the lower the threshold is for being able to socially interact with people, to being able to exchange energy with people regularly. So like now that I'm working full time, and I work in a a retail, basically a retail place. It's not your not like a Walmart or we have a lot of general public. I work at a salon centric, so it's hairstylists, but it's still peopling and it's still being required to be on the phone and talking to people and answering questions. And by the end of an eight hour day, I don't want to look at a, another human. I don't want to talk to another human. <laughs> I'm fucking done. And by the end of a full week of that or straight five days of that, girl, I I need that entire 48 hours to just fucking vegetate in my bed to recover. And nine times out of 10, I don't get to do that because I'm still a wife and a mother of two boys. And I still have to like interact with the other humans in my home. I can't just pretend nobody exists. So Mm -hmm. Right. My, I, I, I have a very low threshold for peopling. What about you? You definitely know that yeah. I, I do. Like you, you have constantly told me that you are amazed that I've held so many customer service jobs. Even now, I'm technically still customer service. My life goal is to not work with the general public. Like if I can even just deal where I just work by myself and like, or even just have to only interact with other employees. Great, fantastic, perfect, please, per- like life goals right there. I get overwhelmed trying, like, and it kind of ties into your other thing of small talk. Like, trying to do small talk all day is it's just too much. And so by the end of the day, I like I I I kind of ignore my phone. I I tell I told Scott like I it's hard for me to get a hold of me after work because I kind of just put my phone away and I just focus on myself because I it's not that I'm trying to ignore anybody. It's just I can't communicate with anyone else at like after after 5 p.m uh, it's it's my time it's no one else needs needs me it's my time yeah i feel that and and we are on a, a two minute warning at this point so i'm gonna make this last one quick mm-hmm. i don't small talk well never have small talk well never got a small talk well yeah it's hard for me to end a conversation like gracefully yes. like it's hard for me to like know when people like what to expect from like when to talk basically like which is hard because i talk to people all day so it's hard for me to like when do i insert my stuff into the conversation in a socially acceptable way um yes. like where do i fit in all this yeah and it's just i will say the most random shit and it doesn't ever make any sense which leaves my coworkers laughing at me quite a lot but i want to say thank you for being on the show that is the end of our time say goodbye to the people thank amanda you for having me. and bye people and i love you i, I love you too thank you this was fun it's a lot less nerve-wracking than i thought it was gonna be <laughs> see you were just fine all right love you bye love you bye all right everybody thanks for listening to that this has been fun our very first ever episode of the new entity of the Neurodivergent Convergence. We're very excited for you to continue to listen in the weeks to come. We have lots more info, lots more shenanigans, lots more (laughs) fuck-ups, lots more fun for you guys from here on out. I am actually super pumped um, about this little endeavor um, because... I didn't plan on sharing this, but I'm going to because it just came to me. So my show that this originally aired on is I've decided to take a step back from that show to be able to produce this one in the most effective way possible and give all of my love, time and attention to this because I am really enjoying doing this with you, Aminder. And (laughs) I'm giving up. I'm what do they call that in, in writing? Killing your darlings. Mm -hmm. I'm killing my darling, my original show. I'm killing my darling. Putting it to bed. Together. Yes, we're putting (laughs) her to bed so that we can do this together and I can give this my full attention. It's a topic that I've been trying to figure out for a long time, how to incorporate into my show and still do the things I was doing before. And it just wasn't really working out. So we're putting that one down. (laughs) We're starting this one. And I'm happy that you all are here. For those of you who came with from Tell Me Your Truth, to hear hi thanks um welcome to the new shit show some of you have heard 
are you know have already heard some of the episodes that are about to air thank you for listening again we very much appreciate you as our og base listener audience we love you thank you aminder let's tell the people where they can find us on the social medias we're very simple over here because we have to be or i won't remember it so (laughs) you can find us on instagram at the and i have to say it that way the ndc podcast or the ndc podcast if that's your more your jam amender facebook go and facebook also at the ndc podcast check us out there as well that is our facebook page um before if you guys were tell me your truth listeners we had a group with the facebook fam um this is a page so we, we would like this to have a little bit more visibility a little bit more access Um, And all of the things neurodivergent convergence will live there on our socials. If we ever have to skip a week, um, if there's anything big going on, uh, just funny shit we're going to post quite often. Because I don't know, um, have y'all figured it out by now yet? We're quite fucking hilarious. We're funny folks. And so we have a lot of really funny things we say to each other. And those are going to make it as content on the social media so that y'all can stay entertained. Okay. We love you all. I love you, Aminder. And I love you. I love you. And we will see you next week. (laughs) Okay, bye. Okay, bye.